Welcome to the Kingsway Christian Fellowship Sermon Podcast. We are streaming live from Carom Downs in Melbourne, Australia. Kingsway Christian Fellowship is a non-denominational, Bible-believing, and preaching church. We believe the Bible is the inherent Word of God and preach it verse by verse. You can follow us at www.kingswaycf.com and follow our video sermons. Now, join us as we listen to the latest sermon preached by Pastor John Shipman. I want to talk to you today and it's going to be maybe a series of two or three messages, I don't know. I want to trust the Holy Spirit to guide me, but over this time that I um, had time off, and I relaxed and uh, refreshed and everything, this theme came upon my mind and I started uh, thinking about it for the last couple of weeks. I want to talk to you about God's power versus willpower. Who knows what is willpower? Who knows what it is? Show me. Who knows what is willpower? That's the power that sits within you, that you think you are so strong. Now, this is, like I say, going to be part one. The dictionary says willpower is the ability to control one's own actions. Who's got strong willpower? Can you control your own actions? It is the ability to control your own emotions. Who's got strong willpower? Oh, I look at a lot of people and I can see their emotions is all over the place. I look at myself sometimes and I say, what's happening here? What's going on with your willpower? Because your emotions is all over the place. It is the ability uh, to control one's own urges. We all know about that one, isn't it? It is when we come to the end of the year and we put down New Year's resolutions, don't we? We say, I'm going to lose a lot of weight and I'm starting tomorrow. And I've got all the willpower to do that because I'm going to control my own urges. By the middle of February, it is gone. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yes. That is willpower. And we all live by that. And you know, we can make fun of it and we can know what we're talking about. But there is also a willpower that came into the church. That a lot of people want to serve God with their own willpower. And you can see it. You can see it so many times. And my prayer is during these next few messages that the Lord will show it to you that you do not serve God with your own willpower. Because willpower will lead you to law. I will say it again, willpower will lead you to rules and regulations and law. You want to try to get better and you work so hard to get even better. You know, I can even throw one thing in there, unforgiveness. I mean, you come to the point and you say, that person has done me so many things and I want to forgive that person and I'm going to will myself to forgive that person and the next time when you see that person and you look them in the eyes, there's this ugly thing crapping up in you and you lose your willpower and you can't forgive and forget am I right I'm not asking you I'm telling you I'm right because this is how it works you listen to people's testimonies I want to love that person Lord and I'm going to try so hard to love that person And then you love that person, you put all these little rules into place to come to the point to love that person and they do something to you or look differently at you and you lose the love. And your willpower is gone. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 1, he says, Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who was wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? So I said, I'm looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right and one at the left. So I answered and spoke to the angels who talked to me and saying, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, listen to this now. 
This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. How wonderful is it to get a word from God. He says, I am sending this word to Zerubbabel. I want you to go and tell him this is God speaking. Brother and sister, it is so wonderful, even if you sit in sermons, don't ever come and sit and sleep in the church, because the Lord has got a word for you. He comes to you this morning, and through the preaching, He comes to you, and He wants to speak to your heart. And He says, I've got a message for you. Now, if you sit there, and you start falling asleep, or you think about the nice things this afternoon, you might miss the word of God. What does He say? He says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. What a wonderful word of the Lord. And never miss it. You see, I hear so many people, they quote this part. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Isn't that right, Glenn? People quote just that part. But they never quote everything that God spoke to, to Ezekiel to go and tell, uh, to Zechariah to go and tell uh, Zerubbabel. What did he say? He says, who are you, O great mountain? Have you seen that? He says, before Zerubbabel, you shall become like a plain. He says, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. You see, Zerubbabel was faced with an enormous task. To him it was like a great mountain. What was that task? He had to rebuild the temple. He had to go back and rebuild the temple. But by now, the people became lazy. And the people became so caught up with their own things. They would start building their own houses. They started forgetting about God's house. They were so focused on themselves. Willpower. I will make a life for me in this new world. They just came out of Babylon. They're out of captivity. They're into the new land. And you know what, God? You will understand. I first need to set myself up before I come to you and give you glory. Isn't that the same today? We are so focused on your own lives. And then... Our lives becomes like a great mountain before us. Some of the things you're going through. It's like a great mountain for this man. He had to rebuild the temple and the work started to stall. People were doing their own things. You see there's two words here which is really interesting. He says not by might. You see the word there? This is an organized big group of people. That's when you get the might. And the one that he says, but by power, that is personal power, personal effort. You see, the might is the group you bring together and the personal power. He says, it's not going to work like that. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So he had a massive task in front of him. It's like a great mountain. Now you understand that when I say that the verse doesn't stop there. It's, it goes over to this. He says, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? There was a great mountain standing before Zerubbabel. And he didn't know how to get over this mountain. He didn't know how to make this mountain a plain. What is your mountain? this morning what is the thing and maybe you don't see that mountain now but in a few months time you will see it and i pray that the holy spirit will remind you of this message because he comes and he says to you and to me this morning not by might nor by power but by my spirit what challenges are you facing you know what the world will say to zerubbabel the world will say come on zerubbabel you can do anything you set your mind to, isn't it? That's what the world will say. Come on, 
Just give it a go. Try harder as their Bible. You can do it. There's nothing wrong with personal uh, motivation, but it shouldn't rule and control your life. What is God saying this morning? Whilst the word is saying, come on, Zerubbabel, you can do anything you set your mind to. The Lord of hosts is saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. And let me just say this morning that some people are living their Christian lives by might and by power. By might and by power. It's effort. If you ask some Christians, it's effort to serve the Lord. It's hard work. And you know some people say, no, no, we need to work harder. We need to do more things for God. You don't need to do anything for God. I'm not talking about ministry here. I'm talking about your personal salvation. He works in you. He works in you. You see, the words here, by might nor by power, has got to do with willpower, man's power. And then, by my spirit, has got to do with God's power. And there's one man who understood this very, very well, and his name was Paul. Paul knew all about willpower. You see, it is not enough to overcome all temptation or to keep our lives honoring the Lord with your own willpower. You will always set yourself more rules to follow. And that's not what God is not about rules to follow. Look at Romans chapter 7. Paul writes now to the church in Rome about this very same thing. He says, for what I am doing, I do not understand. Is this you? Sometimes? For what I'm doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. What is Paul saying? He's saying my willpower is not helping anything here. The things I want to do, I don't do them. And the things I don't want to do, I do them. Is that you? It is certainly me sometimes. He says, for I will to do that I do not practice, but what I hate that I do. Verse 16, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. That is so profound. And again, let me make it easy for you to understand. The things I want to do, I don't do them. And the things I don't want to do, I do them. We tell your children, do not do that then we go and we do that. Isn't that right? This is the same concept here. The willpower. This is what he was talking about. You see, Paul's problem wasn't a lack of desire. You can't turn to Paul and say, hey, you need to try harder. No, he tried so hard. He says, I tried so hard not to do the things I should not do, but I find myself doing them. And it's the same with you and me. It is not a problem of knowledge. You know what some churches will say and what some pastors will say? If you, if you do the things you don't should do, they say, come, we'll, we'll put you on another training course. We'll train you more in the Word. We'll put you in classes and in programs. The church is filled and rife with programs. You know what I want to say this morning? Throw all the programs out and bring Christ crucified back in the church. He had all the knowledge. He had the desire. No, no. His problem, brothers and sisters, is a lack of power. That's his problem. Not by might. Not by your own power. But by God's power. That is his problem. He lacks power because the law gives no power. 
You see, there's so many rules that people bring in, and you had to do better and better and better to, to complete those rules and to do those rules. So what, what power are we talking about here, and how do we get this? Isn't it, isn't it interesting? What power? If it's not by might, uh, and not by your own power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. What is this power? Let's look at verse 2 again. He says, and he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I'm looking and there is a lamb stand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And there stand seven lambs and seven pipes to the seven lambs. Two olive trees are by it, one on the right and one on the left. What he was seeing was this. He saw these big olive trees. He saw these pipes into the olive trees. He saw the big golden bowl. And then he saw all these pipes coming into the seven lampstands. And they were burning. That's what he saw. Brothers and sisters, this is so powerful. You need to go and read this again this afternoon and spend time in it. Because this is the whole essence of it. I told you, chapter 3 talks about the cleansing. Chapter 4 talks about the power. You need, I need the power of God. You see, when you look at this, the seven lamb stands and the seven lambs, it shows towards the temple. You remember in the temple, they had the seven lambs in the temple. And what had to happen? The priest comes every day. They walk into the temple and they had to clean out these lambs. And they had to put in new olive oil. And they had to put in the wick. And they had to keep the light burning. And what was the, what was the emblem of the lights there? It meant that Israel was to be the light to the nation. Nations. Israel was to be showing nations how a sinful people can approach a holy God. God used that nation and he still uses that nation today. But the priest had to go in there every day. It's hard work, isn't it? It takes a lot of willpower to keep on doing it every day. Yes? The priest had to get up. They had to dress in a specific way. They can't just walk up there with their, you know, their thongs. Is that how we say it in Australia? Their thongs, their, their pluckies or their sandals or whatever you call them. And, and they can't just turn up there in shorts and in a t-shirt and just walk in there and say, now we're just going to see how it is. No, no, no. They had to dress in a specific way. They had to go through a specific ritual before they can enter into that place. They had to wash themselves. There was the the, the Brazen, the brazen pot with water in the cleansing. They had to do a lot of work before they come to this lampstand. And when they come to the lampstand, they had to meticulously take out whatever is in there, clean it up, put fresh oil in, and light it again. And then they go out in a specific way. And tomorrow they wake up and they do the same thing over again. They have to go into it, they have to clean it out, they go out. And tomorrow they wake up and they do the same thing. 365 days a year, they had to do the same thing over and over again. That takes a lot of willpower, amen? No laziness here. You cannot beat one day or miss one day. Some people's Christian lives are like that. And you know what? There's a young man, he came to me one day, he said to me, it's so hard to serve God. It's hard work. I said to him, yes, it is hard work. That's why you need God's power to help you. Because you can't do it in your own power. You will burn out. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it, how people come and they are so, they've got such a zeal for God. They're in every church service. They want to be at every Bible study. They want to be at every prayer meeting. And then one month, two months, three, four, five, six months later, you don't see them anymore. And when you talk to them, they say, oh, it's so hard work. I couldn't keep up the pace. What is the problem? It is willpower. It is your own power. 
And then we have services and people recommit their lives and they start this whole thing again. It's like a treadmill. They come and do the whole thing again for two or three months and then they disappear again and you walk up in the street and they don't want to see, you know, they duck and dive because they see there comes the pastor. I haven't been in church for over four months and now they duck away. They don't want to give excuses anymore because it's willpower. You cannot serve God with your own willpower. You need the power from above this is such a perfect picture for us this morning the priest had to go in every single day and they had to do all these things to give a light uh, to give uh, to clean it and to to serve God in there and now and now we find this beautiful picture and what is this picture he says there's two olive trees and these pipes straight into the olive tree. What does it mean? It means there's a continuing of oil coming out. There's no effort from you. The oil just keeps on coming out. The oil just keeps on coming out. I say the oil just keeps on coming out. And it keeps on coming out. And it keeps on coming out. And you say, I'm tired. And I'm saying to you this morning, the oil of God is just keep on coming out. And you say, there's a mountain in front of me. And I say to you, the oil of God is keep on coming out and you say I've got this problem in my life I can't love that person and I say the oil of God is keep on coming out and the oil of God is keep on coming out and the power of God is in keep on coming out this is what this tree is resemble can you see that this morning can you see it's not your power but it's the power of God Amen. hallelujah I thought I was a strong man in my life when I was in my 20s and 30s. Young people, listen. I thought I was very strong. But the older I get, the more I realize I get weak. And the weaker I get, the stronger God gets. Hallelujah. Oh, it's the power of God and it continues to flow and to flow and to flow. Jesus said to the people, he says, you are the light to the world. To whom did he talk? Come on, to whom did he talk? We are the light to the world. But you say to me this morning, Pastor, I'm struggling so much with my own personal life. I haven't got a light to shine to the world even. And you are absolutely right because you are doing it in your own power. You need to resign to the power of God. Sir Babel, it's not by mouth, might, nor by power your own efforts but it is by my spirit says the lord what is this resemblance i want you to listen this morning if you go into 2022 and you're going to slog it through you understand that word it's going to be a tough year for you i've got no good news for you but if you're going to resign to the power of god you're going to get good help power is here the power here is the holy spirit God offers us something stronger than willpower, brothers and sisters. He offers us spirit power. Amen. You can say hallelujah. You can say glory to God. You can say praise the Lord. You can say amen, amen, amen. Because I'm giving you the answer here this morning. If you feel tired, you say to me, it is January and it already feels as if I need a holiday. Are you there? It feels as if I need a holiday after the holiday. I'm saying to you, you need God's power. You know, I've got a mountain in front of me going back to work tomorrow. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in God's power. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 he says now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us everybody say power, power. he says the power that works in us what power is he talking about the word there is dunamis you see the word there it's dunamis. The Greek word is dunamis. He says, let me read it again. Let me read it again. Because sometimes I get a little bit, you know, if, if, if it's not too long, I get a little bit in a hurry. He says, now to him, who's the him? God, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. 
or think, Lord, how am I going to get over this mountain? He says, I do exceedingly more than you ask and think. Hallelujah. 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 And then he says, according to the, according to the, the dunamis that works in us. To him be glory in the church, Jesus Christ, to all the generations forever and ever and amen. You know what the word dunamis means? That's where we get our English word dynamite from. You know what happens with a dynamite? If I lit a stick of dynamite here, I tell you, we will, we will empty this all like nothing. <laughs> it's not like smelling the food afterwards and you just drink along to the food. If I light a stick of dynamite, you're gone, yeah? This is the power. But it's not the only word that we find from dynamos. We also find the word dynamo, yeah? What is a dynamo? Come on. It is something that keeps on keeping on, keeps on. You are dynamic. You're a dynamo. You just get, you know, somebody comes to you and they say, man, you're a dynamo. That's a compliment because they say you just keep on going. And it's not ever really batteries. It is the power of God. The power of God. That is what dunamis is. He says, this dunamis is working where? In us. So why are you working with your own willpower if you've got this resource? You are tapped into the olive trees. Hallelujah. You are tapped into the olive trees. I'm saying this morning, you are tapped into the endless power of God. A few more verses and then we'll pray. You remember this verse in Acts chapter 1 verse 8? Jesus uh, appears to his disciples after the resurrection and he says to them the following. He says, but you shall receive what? Who shall receive it? We shall receive it. He said it to his disciples. I get that. He said to them, but you shall receive power. It's the same word. It's the word dunamis. It's the word. Shall I go back? Shall I go back according to the power that works? Come on in us he said it to them but you shall receive power when the holy spirit when the holy spirit come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem he was talking about in this particular place about being a dynamo be dynamic a witness for christ people read this wrong i unfortunately i'll have to address that you see, you find all these funny things that they say the Holy Spirit is doing in churches. People are laughing until they pass out. And they, they say, that's the power. And they're sliding on the floors. And they do funny things, which is not the Holy Spirit. And they say, that's the power. No, 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 it's not the power. It's a mocking of the power. When he said to them, you shall receive power. Here, he was referring to them to preach the gospel. To preach the gospel. He wasn't talking only about dynamo, he was talking about dynamo. You say, prove it to me then, I prove it to you in the verse. He says, dynamis, I told you what that is, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my what? Witnesses. witnesses. Who knows what the Greek word is there for witnesses? It's martyr. Martyr. What is a Martyr. It is somebody who dies for his cause. Wow, now it changes the verse, isn't it? Isn't it? He says, you shall receive power. Why? Because you're going to die. You're going to die in yourself and preach my gospel. To whom? To the rest. He says, you need to be my witnesses. One more verse, John 14, 16. Are you enjoying the word of God? He says, and I will pray the Father, Jesus turned to his disciples, and he will give you another helper. The word there is parakletos, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. There is three truths in the Bible. Three truths. The spirit is truth. Jesus is truth. And the word is truth. 
Okay? That's a different message. I won't go into that now. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. He dwells with you and will be in you. You see, brothers and sisters, we need the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I finish with this. I showed you this morning. It's not going to be by willpower, but it's going to be by the power of God. But here comes it. John chapter 6, 63. If the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. You see, there is people, even in this place this morning, there will be people who still do not believe in the power of God. You say, oh, but you are offending some people now. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you the truth. Oh, but everybody will stand up now and say, I know about the power. How can you then say that there's people who do not believe in it? Let me tell you this way. If you do not allow the Spirit of God to work in your life, you are not believing in it. You can say whatever you want to say. I've heard people say funny things. Even, even a parrot can say funny things. You get a parrot, a little bird, and you teach him, and he can say, Hello, my name is Max. Hello, my name is Max. He can say whatever you want him to say. Exactly. But if you're not going to start allowing the Spirit and the power of God to work in your life, you're not believing. You're not believing. You need to allow it in your life. He says it right there. This is Jesus' word. He says, but... There are some of you, everybody say some of you, who do not believe. He says, it is the Spirit who gives life. What gives life? It gives life. The flesh, the willpower, profits nothing. Who gives life? The Spirit gives life. He said it to them. They were like this crowd now, in his own words. I read to you Jesus' words. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are all life. But there are some of you who do not believe. But they can stand up and say, no, Jesus, we believe. We've heard you say it. We believe. We believe. We believe. But if you're not going to live it, it shows that you're not believing it. My final scripture for the morning. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, this is Paul talking to them, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now listen to this. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. I don't think you've heard what I said. I'm going to read it one more time. He says it, For it is who? God. God. Who? Works. works. No, I think I need to say it one more time so everybody can hear it. For it is God who works. Where? In you both. To do what? To will and to do for His good pleasure. Now here is the question. You need to allow Him to work. You need to allow Him to work in you. Now next week, I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. Because we're talking about the Holy Spirit here. The power of God. Amen. Have we learned something today? In what power do you want to operate this week? In God's power. But don't fear, I'm not going to leave you there and you say, but pastor, you didn't never tell us how to do that. You know, maybe in the third message, I'm going to come and show you exactly how you need to start working in that. And it, it will be life-changing for some. Because it means you need to walk away from your willpower. And that's easier said than done for some. Heavenly Father, 
I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you, Father, that you stirred up my heart for this message. And Father, I thank you for the power, which is your Holy Spirit, the power of God, which is working in us. And Father, I want to pray and say, Lord, please work in my life, power of God. I pray, Lord, that you be with everybody as we go into our week. Help us to remember this message, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit flow through us in Jesus' name. Amen.